Okay, now I want to talk about the pitch and the structure and how it pertains to a good sales environment and uh, how it pertains to increasing close rates. Uh, if you guys are getting some value, let me know. Uh, if you're watching this live, you're watching the replay, whatever it is, put in the comments right now, ask your questions. Uh, is this making sense to you so far? Let me know in the comments. So, uh, understanding of goals. So, so, so important. If your customers do not understand the goal of your consultations, of your calls with them, if they think it's that they're just going to see numbers, if you're just gonna show them the numbers, see if they're savings, give them a proposal, you do not call that a closing call. You do not try to close it. You do not call yourself a closer. Don't, because you've set it up poorly. This is, again, one of the number one ways that reduces close rates is by not clearly explaining to customers the goal of your closing call. In Virtual Solo Club, we call it approval call. If you tell a customer the goal of your appointment when you're booking that appointment and at the beginning of your closing call is to just look through the numbers and see if there's any savings, you are asking for, you're literally asking them to say, at the end of this, you know, say thank you, can you send this to me in an email, or thank you, I need to think about it. You're literally, in other words, asking them to tell you that. So if a lot of you guys out there are getting that objection, I need to think about it, or can you send this to me in an email, I have not gotten that objection for years. And I know as soon in VSC, as soon as people start implementing this specific part of the sales environment, that immediately stops happening on a grand scale. You have to let the customer understand your goals. You have to be transparent with them. Don't try to hide uh, to, uh, from them that you're going to try to close them. That doesn't work. In your appointment setting call, or the beginning of your closing call. Do not use words like, all right guys, we're just gonna go over the numbers today and if you like it, let's see what happens and go over the proposal. No, you're lying to them. Your goal is to close them. Tell them you're going to close them. Stop lying to your customers. So they have to understand the goals. And what is the goal of the call? To get paperwork signed, to get this wrapped up, to get that energy bed down, to take action. That's what you tell them. Don't be afraid of doing that. By the way, if you've never done this before, the first time you ever do this, you're gonna be very afraid. It's gonna feel very strange to tell your customer, hey, by the way, I'm gonna close you at the end of this. Or booking an appointment and say, hey, by the way, 4 p.m. appointment, I'm gonna close you on that 4 p.m. appointment. You're gonna be like, no way, that doesn't work. I promise you it does, and I promise you it'll massively increase your results as well because customers know what's going to happen. So this happens in the appointment setting call. You're framing that appointment and telling them the goals of what, that, uh, of what that call is. So in other words, instead of I'm going to close you, it could be awesome and tomorrow at 4 p.m. John, look if we can get you approved for this and get that bill drastically uh, lower than what it is now and just secured and, and never goes up, give you some independence. Sounds like a good goal for tomorrow, get it wrapped up. What do you think, John? Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Awesome, John just said he's ready to go if I get him approved on finance and everything looks good and we get the numbers right. But if I say to him, so John, yeah, tomorrow we'll look at the numbers and yeah, if everything looks good, yeah, yeah. You're giving them the power there. You're, you're telling them, I'm just gonna show you numbers and then you make a decision whenever. But if I'm telling him, hey, tomorrow my appointment, this is what we are going to do. And if the numbers look good, we get you approved and get you off the utility bill, which is something you just told me five times in the past 15 minutes that you wanna do, we're gonna wrap it up right there and then. Sound like a goal? And they're like, yeah, I, yeah, I wanna get my power bill down. Fantastic. And the beginning of that closing call, Another opportunity to give them goals. They are agreeing to those goals. At the beginning, you're doing the summary, and then before you jump into all the numbers and stuff, you just repeat that same goal. So guys, by the way, John and Mary, the goal for today is we're gonna run these numbers here. We're gonna see if we get that lower, and if we can, if we can get you fully approved here, uh, we're gonna get you off that utility bill, get that number down, and wrap it all up, all right? Does that sound like a good goal for today, John and Mary? Fantastic, yeah, good stuff, awesome. Let's see what we can do. You're literally getting them to say, yeah, Josh, if you can get me a proof of finance, get my numbers down, get me off the utility bill, and all the things that you said you're gonna do for me over the past day or two during our sales interaction, I'm ready to go today and wrap it up. And again, if you've never done this before, it can be very daunting, telling a customer you're gonna close them before you do so. But I promise you, just, just bear with me. Do it the next three or four closes and appointment set, setting calls. Just, just do it and see what happens. And it's gonna, it's gonna be like, ooh, and they're gonna say, yeah, that sounds good. And you're gonna be like, holy shit. And on the closing call, you're gonna do it at the beginning, and, and hey guys, so the goal for the day is boom, 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 does that sound like a fair goal? And they're gonna say, yeah. And you're gonna be like, oh, oh man, Josh knows what he's talking about. He's not a bloody lunatic. 
Make your customer understand the goals. Do not hide those from them. Do not say you're just gonna run numbers and then try to close them. If you're gonna try to close them on that call, tell them you're going to close them on that call. In other words, be very, very transparent about what the goals are. We're gonna wrap it up, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this today, today, if we can do this. Fair enough, does that sound like a goal? Perfect, okay? Very important piece to creating that sales environment because if you're in a sales environment, let's, let's do a hyperbole, a crazy example. You uh, book, uh, or you get an appointment, someone books for you, and you think uh, that uh, this customer is ready to talk about uh, getting their electricity bill down with solar or energy efficiency, and um, you pick up the call, and uh, the, you start talking about solar or EBR, and the customer goes, whoa, whoa I, thought, I thought this was to get a new fridge. Well, you're not gonna be able to close solar at that point. Extreme example, but it's the exact same bloody thing. You tell the customer you just wanna look over numbers on a call and then you try to close them, they're gonna freak out and say they need to think about it. You tell a customer we're gonna do X, Y, and Z and if we can, we're gonna do X, Y, and Z, wrap up, paperwork, sign documents, whatever, the closing language that you're gonna be using uh, and, ask, and they've already said, by the way, they wanna do this already multiple times to you. They say, yes, that sounds like a good goal and then you do X, Y, and Z on the closing call oh my goodness what do you know more closes more deals because you did what you said you were going to do okay um and then finally i think finally we might have one more after this is when you go into your pitch before you go into your pitch this is my general rule of thumb make sure number one that if you haven't spoken to one spouse so you haven't spoken to mary but you've spoken to john make sure you catch mary up on everything that has uh, been said to John. Make sure they understand what's going on. So, Mary, uh, we, I spoke to John yesterday, and this was a, a, B, C, D. This is what we do, A, B, C, and D, and this is the goal for today, A, B, C, and D. Do you have any questions? Oh, Mary asks a, a basic objection that John probably asked in the appointment. Great question, Mary. A, B, C, and D, A, B, C. You're getting Mary exactly where John was yesterday when you booked that appointment, up to speed, ready to go, agree to the goals before you move into everything. You're getting them up to speed, okay? And then also, uh, one caveat to this is make sure you tell people what you're going to do before you do it. Now, that telling them you're gonna close them is also included in that, but it also includes other things. For example, I don't like telling people, um, let's take the appointment sitting call for example. There's a few, uh, steps that you need to them to take uh, from the appointment setting to the closing. Send the utility bill, uh, show up on the call on time, um, tell them uh, some extra information, confirm their email address, their phone number, the utility, uh, you know, credit score information or whatever. There's a few checkpoints you need to do to book an appointment in. You have two options. One is you could just do it instead of telling them what you're gonna do before you do it, you just do it. You just go straight into it and say, Awesome, John. Hey, what's your credit score? Oh, what's the email address? Okay, uh, uh, send me the utility bill. And they're sort of on the fly figuring out what you're trying to communicate to them. And sometimes it can freak them out. Also, this, this pertains to the closing call because you have a structure, hopefully. You have a structure. And if you sort of just bleed into everything and they don't know what to expect is coming next, for them, they do not perceive a structure. They hear someone talking at them. And that can often lead to a lack of control in the conversation. However, if you tell people what you're going to do before you do it, for example, beginning of the closing call or somewhere in the beginning. So guys, this is what we're gonna be doing today. First, we're gonna be looking at the bill, analyzing this, then we're gonna be seeing over here, then we're gonna be jumping over here, then this, then this. Does that make sense? They say yes. Then five minutes later, you're covering uh, their electric bill and some extra fees, you know, or something. And then and Mary jumps in and says, hey Josh, I had a question about solar. Well now, because you told Mary that the solar and going over solar is step three, you can very kindly, very reasonably say, oh yeah, I'll, absolutely Mary. Like I said, it, I'll cover the solar in just like a few minutes here. And she's like, oh yeah, that's right. Sorry, that's, that's you know, the next step. But if you start talking at people and don't give them a structure, don't tell them what you're going to do before you do it, if you just start saying instead of 
So John, there's a few steps here. Number one, I'm gonna ask you a few questions now. Number two, I'm gonna get you to send your utility bill through. Number three, we're gonna book a follow-up appointment, right? So I'm, I'm in my appointment setting call. And number four, uh, if we get you approved, then we're gonna handle installation and go from there. And if you don't say that, and instead just start asking questions, what a customer might say is, hey, how long is this gonna take? I, I, don't, I can't make a decision right now. You're on your appointment setting call. You're not gonna try to ask for a decision right now. But they didn't know that because you didn't tell them what you're going to do, what your process is. You didn't give them a forecast of what's happening before you actually did it. So it strongly pertains to the closing sales environment because if you're giving them that structure, telling them what's going to happen next, they, they know there's a structure and the control is maintained and they don't start coming in with random questions. Um, and uh, yeah, they see a light to the end of the tunnel. They see, okay, we're gonna go through this, 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 and this, and they know what's going to happen. It's just making your cu customers comfortable. All right. So. Uh, that is what in general, unless I have another one, I, yeah, that's in general what that looks like. All those different components to creating a sales environment. And I promise you, if you're not doing that yet or any of those components, you start implementing that right away, it'll change the game for you.